All right, Commander's defensive end Chase Young might not be ready by week one. Coach Ron Rivera expects Young to miss, quote, a little bit of time during the start of the regular season. Young recovering from a torn ACL he suffered in week 10 last year. Here's more from Ron Rivera on Young's situation. Well, I don't think there's a fair timetable, you know, other than he'll, he'll probably start off on pup into the regular season, active pup. Um, just it's, it's, unfor it's unfortunate, um, but it, it was a serious, you know, injury, obviously, with, with surgery. And um, he's doing everything he's supposed to. He's, uh, he's on time as far as uh, where the doctors think he should be. And, um, you know, as he, as he gets better and better, we can update you. But right now, this is, he, he's right where he needs to be. A little bit of time. You never know exactly what that means. Looking at Chase Young past two seasons, obviously some of the uh, games went down due to that injury. So 15 games in 2020, only nine in 2021. So we're going to be looking for him to come back stronger and healthier. That's exactly what the commanders are hoping for in 2022. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers fear center Ryan Jensen is out for the season. He was carted off the field at training camp Thursday after suffering a knee injury. The Bucs could turn to in-house Robert Hainsey or perhaps sign a free agent like J.C. Treader. Here's head coach Todd Bowles with more. Well, the four-man rush, it wasn't anything severe. It's just a fluke thing that happened, you know. It was part of football. It's unfortunate that it happened. It could have happened anytime, anywhere. And, you know, we feel bad for Ryan. Obviously, it's a big loss when you lose an all-pro center. But there's a chance for other guys to step up. And if it's going to happen, it happened early enough to where we can get some guys ready and we can adjust. Sure, Tom Brady's not happy about that one. Well, you know what? And as someone who's played the quarterback position, your center is your guy. That's your guy. And yeah. certainly a big blow for the Buccaneers. And yeah, Tom Brady uh, not going to be happy about this, but obviously wishing the best for Jensen as they hope that maybe they can get him back at some point later in the season. You see his pass blocking snap, 756. He played 98% of Tampa Bay's offensive snaps. He is the guy in the center of that line. Another injury to watch. This is really just a segment of positive news here, right? Training camp underway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this time we're going to Niners camp. Defensive lineman Eric Armstead missed a few weeks of practice after spraining his MCL. The injury is not considered to be serious, which is obviously a good sign. We'll just have to wait and see. Looking at the players with the most sacks on the Niners, since 2019, you see Armstead second on that list with 19 and a half sacks, only to be second to Nick Bosa, who had 24 and a half. Houston's number three overall pick, Derek Stingley Jr., hasn't practiced or participated in OTAs yet. The former LSU man played just three games last year after suffering a Liz Frank injury in his left foot. But Houston head coach Lovey Smith said he expects his rookie cornerback to be ready for week one. We're, we're day, what's this, day four, training camp. We got plenty of time. Stingley eventually will get there. Uh, things I know about Stingley that I didn't know back, you know, you can look at the video, see that he's an elite athlete, got all the skills you're looking for in a cornerback. But his intellect, his brain, he gets it just like that. Love where he is. One of the best beards in the yeah, NFL. That was pretty epic. On Lovey Smith. <laughs> yep. Love it. High hopes for Stingley in that Texans secondary. Uh, in three seasons at LSU, we recorded 73 tackles and six interceptions. As you take a look at the top five draft picks, as mentioned, he went number three overall. Time now for your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier Fuel Your Play. Now, Friday's Hydration Multiplier comes from Detroit running back DeAndre Swift. Swift going into his third season with the Lions and has rushed for over 1,100 yards in eight games started. He's appeared in 13 games total in each of his first two seasons, and last year he saw a significant uptick in his usage in the passing game. We'll discuss that in a second, but first, here's his head coach Dan Campbell discussing his value to this offense. Look, it goes without saying, Swift is, is one of our most explosive players on offense. Like, literally, we feel like, all right, man, if we set this up right and there's any space, this guy, this guy could take it to the house. Like, he's got that ability. And so, my gosh, man, you want those guys out there uh, every play. But you also know you may not have them. I, I think a little bit what you're asking goes into what Eric just asked. And, and 
I would like to see if, man, can we get him out of camp, get his legs under him, get him in really good shape, uh, get, like I said, get the intensity, get the volume under him, and then let's see where he looks like. Because, look, this time last year, we went and he, you know, we had to, we had to pull back, man. He, he missed, shoot, man, week and a half, two weeks of camp for the most part. Um, and so we really never got to put a load on him and get him prepared for a season. We have him ready for San Fran, and, I mean, he takes, you know, and uh, he takes quite a bit of reps. We didn't want to do that, but yet it's, it just kind of happened that way. I mean, we throw him a screen, he takes it to the house. You know, you're trying to win a game. And, uh, and so that may have started that whole, you know, he didn't get the load in camp, and then and here you go, first, first game out of the box, he's – uh, he's got quite a load on him, and then it just starts to stack over time. We don't make it through a season, you know, halfway through the season, 10 games in or whatever that is, it starts to. And so so I, I, I kind of think of it as, well, maybe we, that mess started in camp. And so let's see what we can do with him. Camp is always one of those situations where you find out just how good your off-season program is. Talking about injuries in the early weeks as players get into the intensity of camp. You see Lions in terms of their NFL rushing ranks last season, weeks 1 to 11. I mean, they're in the top 10, but then 12 to 18 falling into the bottom half of the league. In terms of DeAndre Swift, PPR, you mentioned his usage in the passing game, 62 receptions last year, ninth, 16.1 points per game is what he was averaging over 13 appearances. Running back rankings going into this season. CBS Sports consensus fantasy rankings. And you see DeAndre Swift sitting there inside the top 10. You heard Dan Campbell mention it. If they can get his legs under him, get, get him going early, you can expect that Detroit Lions rushing offense to be within the top 10 to start the season. And that is your Liquid IV hydration multiplier. Fuel your flame. Well, Kenneth Gainwell had six touchdowns and 101 touches last season as a rookie. Today in Eagles training camp, he got reps with the first team offense. Gainwell was the first team running back. In addition to using him as a runner, the Eagles had Gainwell split out wide at times. Miles Sanders is taking carries with the second team. Certainly an exciting player to watch, but what exactly does this mean? for the Eagles and your fantasy projections. Well, you see the numbers there. You also have to remember, in 2019, Gainwell had 16 touchdowns and 282 touches for Memphis. He opted out in 2020. I know college and the pros, very different things, but pretty impressive numbers. And Sanders, you gotta wonder how he felt about taking those second team reps today. Well, people are already getting set for fantasy football, and that means that you got DFS plays to consider. DraftKings releasing week one prices for daily fantasy. Here are the highest priced flexed plays for week one. And Jonathan Taylor topping that list at 9.1 thousand. Then you have Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey. I mean, it's a who's who of running backs in the top four. Now, Devontae Adams, of course, expecting big things out of him with the Raiders this coming season. Debo Samuel, another guy, centerpiece of an offense just across the bay in San Francisco, are rounding out the top ten. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.